Hi friends, my name is Borradante. Let's test Corel Painter 2017. This. Now, this is actually a very sentimental let's test for me, because Corel Painter was actually the very first art program that I ever painted in years ago as a kid. So, yeah, I lost my art virginity to Corel Painter. But it's been so many years since I actually tried it out, and there's been a whole lot of different versions in between. But I don't know, uh, I remember I tried it once when they updated interface a lot, so that was kind of fun to check out, but I don't remember anything about it. Anyway, so we're gonna go around and I'm gonna like get a fresh look at everything, and again, compare it to my preferences of today, of everything, and, well, basically compare it to Photoshop, the way I do with everything else. I'm pretty sure I'll be surprised how certain things don't really work that well, especially, like, interface-wise, navigation-wise. So, excited, let's get started! 30 days remaining. Get, get started, oh yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Create a new image. Let's do one of those. Aha. Uh -huh. Window. Okay. What if I... go? Cool. Good. Probably no tabs here, but whatever. I'm actually wondering. Are there tabs? So yeah, we can uh, full screen one at a time and then control tab between the windows, but they're like always be full screen inside of the program. So... Okay, touch navigation working. Wow, that is some frame rate stuff double tap oh my god double tap with two fingers fits the screen praise the lord of user interfaces i have found another program except for photoshop that does that oh uh, i i'm so happy i why am i so happy i want to thank my parents okay so I really want to always mention this, so this program is obviously not free, and here we go. $360, one-time payment, of course, otherwise it would be insane. Oh, Black Friday starts early, so that is not forever, so $430 usually. So there's that. She looks awesome. Okay, so let's see, um, I'm gonna do like two episodes, the same we did with Art Rage. I have an idea of what I want to paint, but we'll talk about that in the second episode. This time we're gonna just check around everything, the way we usually go. So let's tweak around some interface, to begin with. Aha, uh -huh, so initially it just stands here, but it's a floating thing. Actually the way I like it, but uh, let's see how we can change that. This is kinda new, I, I don't know, well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Red is bad, or how does this work? <laughs> Aha, blue is good. Okay, so bars can stick to the side, but not panels, right? Okay, what? Aha, uh -huh, full screen just removes bars. Is it called actually full screen? Single document view. Oh, so when, when they're like windows, I can press this button here, and it turns into this without scroll bars and all. And you can like use a hotkey to quickly switch to window mode instead of having tabs you can like switch to the this mode and all the documents you work with will be right in front of you you can just put them on your this inner desktop of Corel so I remember I really love the way brushes work in Corel but that's basically because it also as most of other digital art software it has stabilization I remember it has like some parameters so it's not super simple to say the least so there's that okay it looks really clean but I know that there's some messy menus around dab option so what the hell is that oh dab is like uh, the shape of your brush of the tip okay you are blending panel Show me, show you, kick on in, kick on in, blending. Then this looks like brush settings, right? Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. A whole lot of menus is quite messy, to be honest. Like, really should have changed the layout after all these years, don't you think, Carl? <laughs> this is just a mess uh, if you just try to comprehend what's going on here. This is like a one-dimensional interface, everything is in, in one row. Texture? 
This is size, this is opacity, which is probably just flow, right, as usual. Shift, shift just vertical, oh, and, and also 45 degrees, yeah. So this is like the most fascinating and massive brush engine, actually. <laughs> so we're gonna have some fun. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to go through everything, even in two episodes, because that's gonna take forever. Most of the things, like, not everything works for each brush, like, some things are only for specific brushes, that's what I remember. And yeah, we can select brushes from here. You can see there's a whole bunch of types of them. The left list are just types. So there's, like, everything for everyone, plus brushes online now, as I can see. Uh-huh. So, before we get into the whole brush thing, let's go into settings of the program and see what's up in there. So, general, interface, enhanced brush ghost, brush ghost, iconic, single pixel, single pixel, lol. Enhanced brush ghost, well, the one that shows tilting, right? A simple brush ghost, yeah, it doesn't show the tilting and it's not all that fancy and tilized. Oh my god, this is the slowest resizing of the brush I've ever seen. So let's choose uh, some kind of artist's oil. Oh, so, okay, so we only see the settings for the brush that actually work. Well, that's good. Real oils, I remember something with the real oils, they're kind of pretty. But do they tilt? That's an important question because they are flat. <laughs> So, I'm using the brackets to change the size. Let's see. Um, control, Alt, click and drag. There we go. <laughs> First try, I mean. Aha, uh -huh, so it always... It's like not going from the radius you're already at, but it's always like click and drag and it's from zero and you just define the size. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it is what it is. Okay, this is rather slow. But the simulation of the geometry of the bristles is pretty impressive. Okay, you're blending too much and obviously it's not to be set up in this menu, so go away. It's in real bristle thing, right? Somewhere around here. Like, there's like a new type of blending that is not just blending, but like a whole simulation of paint being smudged. Artist's oils. Paint, brush, canvas. Amount of paint. A lot. Viscosity. No, oh, how fast it runs out of paint. Yeah, don't do that. Blend. Like, no blend at all. Aha, uh -huh, so it's completely dry this way. Wow, it really doesn't handle my favorite sizes. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm recording right now, but it doesn't affect the speed in Photoshop and other programs, so there's that. Wow, this is really nice blending. I like it. Oh no, it doesn't have zoom and click and drag. That is disgusting. Wow, the navigation of the camera is the worst. So slow. That's why it doesn't have click and drag zoom. Let's see, what... Does it have, like, OpenGL stuff or something? But let's finish with the interface. Color theme. Dark. Dark gray. Is it darker than default? Kinda looks the same. I don't know, it's hard to tell. I mean, it's uh, nice enough, so whatever. Performance. Oh, multi-core usage. Yeah, more than two. Use all four, why not? Or no, I'm recording, so I guess let's use three. <laughs> I'll try three, I hope it won't mess up the recording. Cause since you're not even using GPU at all, you're gonna need some CPU. View options. Smooth objects when zooming. You mean like when pixels are big, you smooth them out? Increase screen drawing speed when zoomed out. I think we need that, but I guess it will make the scaling really gross, the pixels will be all messed up. I'm gonna check off both of them. Okay, everything else is something small. Wacom compatible device when tap. Yeah, yes, please, when tap. Uh, multi-touch options, enable multi-touch, Corel Painter multi-touch, requires Wacom compatible device. Everything is perfect here. <laughs> Connections, whatever. Um, and there's a, a, a crash we witness. Okay, uh, hello again, my name is Boro. Is everything gonna be reset now? Well, my brush is the one that I chose, so not everything is forgotten. Uh, so now I can't navigate with my fingers for some reason, and I paint with one of them. Um, 
I don't remember disabling touch gestures. What's up? Yeah, we're back. Good. So, did it save any changes that I did? Nope, it did not. I'm not gonna touch the... I'm not gonna touch anything, actually. <laughs> yeah, one thing I wanted to touch, though. Uh, the view options. Let's check off those. All 3K. That's a pretty normal size, right? So let's work with that. Gestures constantly fuck off. I don't understand why. Yeah, without gestures, we're stuck with this disgusting old school zoom, which is not an option. So you better start working now. Yeah, it keeps trying to paint with it. Ugh. So many glitches. Like, I don't know, what, 20 years on the market. What's going on? Wow, I thought it was gonna be good. <laughs> but so far it's like, it just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. This is the worst. Anyway, double tapping on the hand does the trick of fitting to screen. Yeah, I mean, all of this is really pretty, but actually I can set this up exactly the same way in Photoshop. I do. There are bristly brushes with amazing simulation and really cool blending if you're using the mixer brush. But it's just gonna be also this slow. What's the point? Well, yeah, that's pretty okay. Oh, color variability. I remember this. I actually... I think I may find it a lot more useful these days than I thought of it before. So this is the kind of color variability there is in here. But there's also smoothness. I think this is gonna be really nice looking. This changes with each stroke now. Hard to tell what exactly is changing. I think it was changing with each stroke before as well. Color variability from audio input. What the hell? Uh, yeah. Oh my god. How is that supposed to work? Uh, uh. Hmm, change the color, you son of a bitch. No, no, I didn't find the audio input thing and now I won't be able to do it because I'm stupid. I said never show it again, but this is something funny. But anyway, I changed the settings of this stuff. You can make it into two columns and it's really exactly like in Photoshop, which always makes me happy. So the color wheel thing is always with a triangle as far as I can see. Well, I mean, triangle is not that bad, at least it has everything decent, black, white, colorful, so... Saturation, value, but I mean, how do I vertically go with the value? Oh god, I have no idea how to work, like, how to make object just brighter then. Not of a bigger value, but brighter. It's a different thing that doesn't take place here at all. Uh, a bit weird. But I guess it makes sense. I I'm pretty sure you can definitely like work with it fine. I'm just really used to the rectangular thing. Yeah, really, I'm so confused with this triangle. I wanna compare it to Photoshop real quick. I was trying to adjust my brain to the triangle. And then we just go brighter like this. To the top. And this is the same saturated color, just brighter. It's fine. That's why it says HSB. This is what brightness is. We'll never become pale white with this color. We can go like black, but of the same saturation. And in here, value, like from the middle color, it will go to the white point like this and to the black point like this. So any color from any point by increasing value to the 100 will hit completely white and at the bottom completely black. Kinda makes sense in the way that whenever anything is overexposed, like super brightly lit, eventually it becomes completely white. So in that sense, it makes one. <laughs> yeah, I guess you just have to like adjust to it. So anyway, this color into this color. Oh, it's like from black to this point, like Whatever point we choose, like this color. So if we want to just increase actual brightness, not the value, for this color, we should like draw the invisible line from black through this point and see where it hits. So we just move at this line. Am I correct? 
this is weird, I never actually thought about that, that triangle is actually not HSB space, but HSV. So not brightness, but values. Okay, so this, this. Yeah, with a little bit of a movement to the left, but I guess this is again, it's kind of hard to make it perfect when it's this. So yeah, I think I figured it out now. So this is how this thing works. So this is just saturation. Saturation and hue are identical in both spaces. So that's all gonna be the same. It's just that the value... Okay, cool, I can work with that. I don't know what for, but I can. <laughs> Touch just completely stops working all the time. So let's probably go through some brushes. Can I just have this list somewhere does it have to be a drop down in the furthest corner from my arm oh there it is it can be a panel as well so anyway with this whole not smoothing thing it only looks gross but it's still laggy the same way so blenders this one's tilting that's nice so yeah this is like a perfect blending blender <laughs> Palette knife, that's supposed to be cool, right? But this one is not tilting. And also not all that awesome. <laughs> Speckle palette knife. Oh, this one is doing something. It, it's tilting, that's what it's doing. It's tilting, but the preview of the brush doesn't show the tilt. That's like the worst. This is like a horrible mindfuck to work with. But the blending is nice. Yeah, tilting palette knife is like, I really like this kind of blenders when it's like a flat thing. Acrylic and gouache. So we're not going through all of these. They're like, it's a crazy gigantic library. And it's not the only one. Not to mention the whole online libraries. There's also from different versions of Painter, there's different brushes. But they're like mostly overlapping each other. But I guess something was removed in newer versions and if you want to have that legacy here you have it okay i want to use like this is painter it's supposed to be all the painty bristly kind of thing so we should choose a brush that does that kind of stuff so i don't know what's up with these nervous hairs of the stroke it looks kind of gross wow this looks pretty yeah the shape of the strokes is really pretty a lot of the times not a lot of the times, like for a lot of brushes, always. So yeah, all kinds of stuff that the brush doesn't clean between the strokes and everything. You can set that up as far as I remember. Wow, this feels really oddly satisfying. Really textury and sharp and soft at the same time. Paper. This looks interesting. Oh yeah, nice old school bristly pattern kind of brush. Like, a lot of things, very, like, a huge amount of different tools in here. There is no way to cover it in just two episodes of the first look. But there's symmetry, like, mirroring. There's kaleidoscope kind of mirroring. That is over there for some reason. I guess that's the initial center of the canvas when it was bigger. Ugh. How do people work with this kind of zooming at all? Is that a thing? Like, people actually work on Corel Painter and they go like, click, click, click. I'm so not used to it anymore. Anyway, so there's that. Complaining again. <laughs> so I, I move it around, then I need to apply it, right? I guess that's the point. Oh, maybe I should choose a brush. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so you can paint a flower. Or a snowflake. Or a satanic pentagram. <laughs> Okay, this looks like some kind of perspective tool. That's interesting. Let's turn you on. Oh, yeah, so actual perspective thing. Wow, it looks so massive. Like heavy massive. And we can so easily tilt the horizon, the red line. Holding shift doesn't help. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, perspective tool. Fully functional, nice and everything. Okay, great. So, Fibonacci golden spiral thing. Uh, whatever. What the hell did I type in right now? <laughs> okay. Do you not stretch automatically or something? Anyway, so the point is, it shows the thing. I'm pretty sure there are settings somewhere for this, but again, whatever. You're not gonna use it anyway. So, now grid. This is rule of thirds one, I suppose. Yep. Uh-huh. 
burn and dodge tools, just like in Photoshop. Okay, so this is like a standard set from Photoshop right here. Oh my god, that is ambitious for you, Corel. That's a, that's a big size of the brush. You find it hard to even create it of this size. Whoa, it's actually creating a millions of bristles right there. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, for that matter, it's kind of fast, but it doesn't even look like bristles because it's not really vector. So yeah, back to looking for a brush that I will use in the next episode. Oily bristle. Sounds good. Oh yeah, I'll probably stick to this kind of stuff. Just like in Art Rage. <laughs> yeah, this looks really nice. Dries really quickly, but I remember we can change that easily. The blending might be like the best ever. In Corel, blending of the colors is so satisfyingly good. Although this is kind of weird. Like, I'm painting with yellow, and if I keep just smearing around, it will disappear completely. How is this possible? Like, every time I'll be doing this, there will be no yellow added to the painting. <laughs> so I guess you don't do that, don't smear things around in one place. Yeah, I really like this brush. It might be even fast, let's try it in a big scale. Ugh, seriously, I have to do something about the touch, because this is gonna drive me crazy. Are you gonna be super slow? Wow, you're fast! And you look identical to Art Rage brush. Except for the fact you don't have like volume to you, and the blending is different. But I love how fast it is in such a big size. Oh yeah, I found my favorite brush now. Awesome. Oily bristle in artist's oil. Cool, so we're gonna be using that, and later if we'll get to painting something that is of fine detail stage, then we'll use some other more controllable brush. But yeah, there's that. This is basically what Corel is. Didn't go as smoothly as I expected, but to be honest, I wasn't surprised by anything. Certain glitches in the interface, I always remember Corel Painter had that. Just the thing, I guess. You just learn what is wrong and you just work around it. I'll try to figure out the touch thing, because I really need that. Right now, it just constantly tries to just paint with my fingers, which is outrageous. Yeah, and then I'll probably, between these two episodes, I'll set up some hotkeys. And we're gonna paint a very creepy character in Corel Painter. So there's that, tell me what you think. And I thank you for watching, if you did, I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend. Click and drag. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.